that whole transition from me being fully vegan, fully sold out to the cause, transitioning from that to literally sitting in my kitchen eating a bowl of ground beef. What up Salty Crew and welcome back to another video. Today, um, upon a lot of requests from you guys, I am going to be telling the story about the time that I ate meat for the first time since being vegan for five years, I believe, four or five years. And I just want you to know I'm not going to make this channel like um, an anti-vegan channel at all. And I'm not going to keep like making videos talking about me not being vegan anymore. I literally just want to get all of this out there towards the start of when I announced it because I just don't want to keep talking about it over and over again. I just want to tell you guys all the info and then kind of go about my business and just live my life and make content about other stuff. So that's why you're being flooded by so many videos of me talking about not being vegan anymore because I just want to address a lot of different things because you guys have questions and I think I want to explain a lot of it because I don't think enough people talk about this um, who transition away from vegan from the vegan lifestyle because it's very shameful and they get a lot of shit for it. And I think I'm in a unique position because while, yes, I have gotten some pushback from uh, some people about it, I've gotten a lot of support and empathy from a lot of people because a lot of you resonate with my story. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, make sure you check out my video, No Longer Vegan, and then also the video where I answer more questions about that video and go into more depth and clarify some things. Anyway, I'm going to be telling the story while I do my makeup. So, um, here we go. We're going to add these bad boys so I can properly do my makeup. My bangs are out of control. They are very floofy and not cute right now because I took a uh, dance class the other day the day that I washed my hair and did it. It looks so cute and now it is insane because it has so much sweat and grossness in it. I'll also leave links to all the makeup that I'm using down in the description box in case you are curious. This is the makeup routine that I do whenever I put on makeup, which is not that often, but I love makeup. I really do. And you guys have asked so many times for a makeup routine and it's just really not my vibe, but I know a lot of you guys love makeup as well and you compliment me on my makeup, thank you so much. So here we are. So the foundation I'm using is Fenty, and I use a mixture of two shades because I become two different colors in the summer versus the winter. I tan very easily, so I need to have two shades on hand for when I'm darker. So right now I'm kind of in the middle, so I'm blending the two. And I'm using this like knockoff beauty blender. I always apply my makeup with that. Okay, so on to the story. First time I ate meat, I was, it was during a time where I was making my dog Tucker his food because he was having stomach issues. He just couldn't tolerate any dry food. His stomach would get upset. He would throw up. He would get like um, pimples and hives on his back. It wasn't great. So the vet um, and this woman that I met at the dog park suggested that I make him his own food. And so I did some research and I came up with the recipe. So what I would put in it is oats, veggies of some kind, either like frozen carrots or broccoli or kale and some ground beef. And then I like added some supplements as well. So I have been doing this for a while. I ended up doing it like a total of maybe like four months, but then it just got to be too much because he is huge. He's a Great Dane. He weighs 140 pounds and he eats a lot of food. And when you give a dog wet food or fresh food, they eat, they need to eat a lot uh, more of it than they would dry food because it is uh, less calorically dense than dry food. So dry food, he would eat at that time eight cups of dry food a day. I guess he still eats that a day. I know that sounds like a lot, but he is a massive dog, so that's like pretty normal. So he eats eight cups of dry food a day, so that means I had to make him at least 16 cups of wet food 
So I was co constantly making him food. It was insane. So anyway, um, I was making him food and I remember <laughs> one day specifically, I've been doing this for a couple months, so it was no big deal. But I would get these like giant things of ground beef from a grocery outlet because it was cheap. It was just like enough ground beef that it made sense for me to buy it. So I was making it one day and I was cooking the ground beef and for some reason it smelled so good to me and before this I literally didn't have cravings for meat ever. I really didn't. And at this point I was eating a pretty balanced vegan diet. I would say it was like pretty balanced in the macros department. It was not low carb. It was a decent amount of carbs, protein, fat, fiber, you know, the whole thing. Uh, I was taking my supplements. I was doing the, I was just doing the thing. I wasn't, I wasn't depriving myself. I wasn't on like keto or something like that. It was just like me eating normally. And I was eating like a lot of whole foods and like, yeah, I was just taking care of myself. So anyway, I was smelling the beef and I was like, I want to eat some of that. And I don't know what came over me, but I was cooking the beef and I literally took a scoop out of the pan. I got a little bowl and I put it in the bowl and I just started eating the ground beef plain, literally. Like it was just a little bit of salt and I ate the entire little bowl of it. It was like <laughs> this big. And I was like, oh my God, like what has come over me? It was the weirdest thing. So after I finished that bowl, I literally had another bowl because I, my body was like, yes, craving more. So I got another little bowl this time I put like some vegan sour cream that I had made in the fridge with cashews. I put a little dollop on top. I put some salsa on top. I mixed it together and I just had myself a little feast of a bowl of ground beef. And I was just in the kitchen alone. Tim was like out working or something. I forget. But I remember feeling so shocked and ashamed of myself. I was just like, what the fuck is wrong with me? And I must have been low in iron or something. I don't really know. I must have been low in iron. But that is weird because I, at that time, I was eating, like, a lot of tempeh and a lot of, like, spinach and kale and stuff like that. Leafy, dark leafy greens. So after that moment, I was like, okay, I'm never doing that again. I got it out of my system. I'm good. Well, let me go back to being vegan again. But it actually just, like, opened the floodgates for me, and I just kept craving meat after that. It would not go away. It was always in the back of my head. And like I said, I was very shameful of that fact because my whole identity was wrapped up in veganism. And I had a whole YouTube channel talking about vegan food, making vegan food, and just promoting that lifestyle. So I was having a little bit of an identity crisis. You know, all my friends, my social network, my entire like family, all knew me as being vegan and eating a plant-based diet. So it was very, it was soul crushing, it was scary. I didn't know what to do. Especially after that incident of eating the bowl of beef, I kept craving meat. The other meat that I craved a lot at first was chicken. And I was still, you know, in the shame spiral of eating meat. So I didn't even tell my husband for like months. I didn't tell Tim I was, which sounds crazy because like Tim has never been vegan. He's like been, I would say throughout my whole vegan journey, he's been like 90% plant-based for the most part. Um, at home, he would just eat vegan. And then when we would go out, he would usually get something that wasn't vegan. So it's like he wasn't even fully vegan and I was like scared to tell him about me eating meat, which obviously like I knew he wouldn't have a problem with and I knew he'd be supportive no matter what, but that's how like fucked up in the head I was. So there would be times that he would go out of town for work and I would literally go to Sprouts because Sprouts had organic, hormone-free, whatever, whole roasted chicken and I would get a whole chicken for I think it was like eight bucks or something and I would eat it for the duration of his trip when he was out of town because I knew that he wouldn't be home. He wouldn't see me eating chicken. He wouldn't see it in the fridge. And I knew that I could just have free reign to eat whatever I wanted without anyone finding out that I wasn't vegan anymore and that I was eating meat secretly. I think the other part of it too is that I didn't want it to be real. I wanted to just get it out of my system, get the cravings out of my system, and then go back to being fully vegan. So... I, I felt in a way that telling him was 
making it more real that I wasn't vegan and I didn't want to go down that path. I wanted to keep it a secret, move past it, and then pretend like it never happened. And I probably would have eventually told him, I'm sure, but I w that was just, that was my mindset. And I, I'm just the type of person who, I'm really bad at asking for help and I, I, I feel a lot of unconscious shame that I never really um, fully understood that I carried until the past like couple of years. And that whole transition from me being fully vegan, fully sold out to the cause, transitioning from that to literally sitting in my kitchen eating a bowl of ground beef. Wow, I felt so much shame. On top of that, I was, I had my online business was about promoting vegan food and promoting recipes. So it was just this constant shame spiral that never went away for me. I feel like this makeup is not gonna look great, but I feel like that cycle of thinking and like coming to terms with things basically and self-reflection, that happens to everyone transitioning from vegan to not vegan. And I think that's why it takes some people a while to process it and then feel comfortable telling their audience and their subscribers or followers that I'm no longer vegan because it's you want to think that it is a a phase or oh I just need more B vitamins whatever and you take the necessary steps to solve those problems on a vegan diet and yet you still find yourself craving these non-vegan foods animals and I know that is like appalling to so many of you, especially if you are still vegan, but that is just the reality of what happened to me. And I'm assuming similar things happen to other people. Okay, I'm gonna touch up my eyebrows real quick off camera and I'll be back. Is highlight over? I feel like people don't do highlight anymore. I just love it so much. I think it looks so nice. As long as you don't overdo it. So after a few months, once it became clear that my body was obviously craving meat and I wanted to just fully try out eating meat to see what would happen with my hormones and my body and my cravings. And that's when I started telling people in my immediate circle, my friends, my family, obviously my husband, um, he was the first person I told and he was just like, okay, like he didn't care at all. Um, and it was so nice. Everyone was just so accepting, understanding, and I'm so grateful for that, truly. And so the past year, I've just been trying to like figure my shit out. Like I've been working on my relationship with food. I've been trying to figure out a way of eating that works for me and my body and my hormones. Cause I do have PCOS. And um, there are months where my hormones are very balanced and healthy. And sometimes like if I go out of town and I eat shitty food that I normally don't eat, it gets a little out of whack. But for the most part, I think they're improving every day. And my periods are getting more regular. I'm also less stressed because now I've told you guys that I'm no longer vegan. It's not a secret anymore. That was stressful and it's something that I didn't want to hide from you, but it was also something that I needed to figure out and go through on my own and become comfortable with just talking about in general because I never wanted to announce it or talk about it when I was in a very fragile and shameful place and I'm not anymore. And I don't know, I, I don't know it's hard because like I I don't want to hurt people and offend, but at the same time, I'm also a very unapologetic person and I am who I am, but I do realize that a lot of you guys are still vegan and um, hardcore vegan. And I know that a lot of you will never go back to eating animals or animal products, so you can't relate to anything I'm saying or my past videos and um, my story with all of that. So I get if you don't understand it. I don't want to keep making these videos because I don't want to over explain myself to people, but I do feel like I owe you an explanation. And also I think it's an important topic to 
open up and talk about because there's so many vegans who like don't get it or understand how you can go from being vegan to not. And it's a gradual progression and there's a lot of denial and identity crisis mixed in there and it's not fun. And I also don't want to, tr I'm not trying to convince people to stop being vegan. That's never been my MO. My main goal has always been with this channel to promote independent thinking and for people to own their decisions and not apologize for them, be authentically themselves and not let other people tell them what's right for them. Eat whatever sort of diet you wanna eat in order to be healthy, to take care of yourself, to balance your hormones. I wanna encourage that type of environment where it's not shameful because you never know what's going on with someone behind the scenes. They could be allergic to a lot of different foods that are plant-based, which makes it really hard for them to go plant-based. They could lack the cooking and culinary knowledge to go plant-based and they just feel very over... A lot of people are just overwhelmed by cooking in general and I know there's so many people who are like, well, cooking vegan food is so easy, it's so cheap and all this stuff. Well, a lot of people don't view cooking and food the same way that you do. I know for me, like, it's always come naturally and I've always loved eating plant-based foods and experimenting and coming up with recipes and, you know, you guys have seen my What I Eat in a Day vegan. I know it was only one video, a small, tiny snapshot of what I eat, but, I mean, it's a variation of that day every day. I I'm not, like, shoveling down the meat in my everyday life. Like I said, I don't, I tend to stay away from dairy unless it's like unavoidable for some reason. I don't know um, if it's inconvenient or something like that. But yeah, like I still eat a lot of plant-based foods. And I think the most important thing that to promote is balance, which, you know, that's so hard to achieve and even like comprehend balance. But I think it's important to recognize and see and applaud when people are doing at least something. When people are at least 80 to 90% plant-based, I think that's something that's worth celebrating. I think it's better to, to strive for that than, and, than to strive for 99, 100% people to be 100% vegan because that will never happen. I just don't think it ever will. And I don't think a vegan world is in our future. That might sound pessimistic because I used to think the total, I was like, oh my gosh, it totally like the world one day will be mostly vegan. I might not be able to live to see it, but I really truly believe that. And now I'm just not so sure. I want anyone who's out there who is vegan and who is vegan for the animals and is just so passionate about this cause and way of life, I don't want you to give up on that. I think you should pursue whatever it is that you are excited and passionate about. And I don't want, if you think that there's gonna be a vegan world in the future, then pursue that. Like don't stop promoting your lifestyle if that's what makes you happy. But if it doesn't make you happy and it brings you more stress and shame and confusion and um, unhealth, then I think it's okay to maybe look at other options and also think of ways that you can be ethical in other ways. Like there's slow fashion. There's that whole aspect of being um, conscious of what's going on in the world, of being aware of the exploitation of human labor. I think we tend to forget the other avenues of exploitation that take place in the world. God, I feel like I'm rambling, but basically the gist of what I'm trying to say is be passionate about something that betters the world. And if it's not veganism, that's okay. Oh, you guys, I have a booger in my nose. <sighs> Fuck me. Did I record this entire thing with a booger in my nose? It was like a tiny one, but... Oh my God, the horror. And I did get a lot of questions too about when I started eating meat, did I, how did I feel about it? I didn't feel great, to be honest with you. I didn't feel great because for so long my morals and ethics lined up with the vegan philosophy. And you know, I, I didn't even like kill bugs in my house. Like when they were in there, I gently let them outside and set them free. My, so much of my life was wrapped up in the vegan philosophy 
that it was super hard. It was very, very difficult, but I could tell that my body was craving meat and the vitamins and minerals or whatever that meat provided. I, I think um, from just guessing from the ground beef and the chicken that I was craving, I had some iron deficiency and B vitamin deficiency. And I, like I said before, I was eating a wide variety of plant foods. I was eating the rainbow. I was eating the daily dozen. Um, and I was taking my vitamins. So that's where I was just like, why is this happening? Like I shouldn't be craving all of these things because I am eating the technical, like healthy vegan diet. And this was in my everyday life, like the recipes that I posted online, that's not like, I wanted to make them like really appealing to everyone, not just vegans, because I know that a lot of non-vegans follow me too. So when I post a recipe, that's not like, I think people think that I, I eat that all the time, but I don't. It's, it's a recipe that I post that I know other people will like. That doesn't mean it's like a daily um, thing that I eat. So yeah, like some of the recipes that I make are not super healthy and some of them are. And in my life and my lifestyle, I have a little bit of both. Um, and with my relationship with food, I am trying not to be so uh, black and white with everything because I tend to have an all or nothing mindset with food where if I <clears throat> quote unquote slip up and eat something that has a lot of sugar in it or is very processed. In the past, I've been very like, okay, well the, <clears throat> the day is ruined, so that means I'm just gonna eat whatever I want. But now I have started to learn how to balance that out and see that it's okay to eat a little bit of processed food every once in a while because it keeps you sane and it helps improve your relationship with food and of that like trigger food or dangerous food. And I'll, I'll talk about this um, in another video. I do want to make more videos talking about my emotional eating journey and how I'm healing my relationship with food. I'm still going through the motions. Like I'm not perfect by any means. It's, it is a journey that it's not linear and, but I have learned a lot. And I've come a long way from where I started with food, um, my toxic relationship with it. So I do want to share more about that. I feel like I'm rambling so much, but basically um, let me know in the comments if you want to see those videos and what specific topics you want me to cover in that realm. Wow, this video was so rambly. I hope it made sense. I just kind of wanted to talk and like regurgitate it all out because I've been like going through all of this stuff in my head. Um, and anyway, I hope it helped someone out there. But main thing that I want you to take away from this video is I don't want to encourage anyone to stop being vegan. I simply want to share my experience with veganism, my journey with food, my relationship with food and balancing my hormones. And veganism is tied into that because I, I mean, I ate a vegan plant-based diet for five years, which was a good chunk of time. And it, it did impact me in positive and negative ways. Same as every other diet on the planet. Um, but veganism comes with a little more baggage than I would say other certain diets because it, it, other things are wrapped in it like morality, ethics, and all those things and what you value. And that's not true of every diet. So anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. I hope you enjoy this. Like I said before, I will leave all the links to everything that I used on my face down in the description box and in case you're interested. And um, let me know if you wanna see more videos like this and any other questions you guys have. And I will see you soon. Take care of yourself. Eat good food, and I'll see you in the next one. Diet Coke ain't good for the soul. Give me that, give me that orange soda. Give me a grape like you see in the movies. Bubble to the top like a smoothie, you'll see. I'll do you like a